guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today's video is about ring sizing. It comes to me from a viewer's question who wanted to know how can he get the correct ring size on his screen. Um, he is trying to use the Jewelcraft tool. And I'm going to show you how I get the proper ring size without using the Jewelcraft tool. But you can use that if you want. Um, I'm going to show you some little tips and tricks to get around this. Let's get started. And of course, guys, if you find this video helpful, please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. So as you know, there are probably a million ways to skin a, a cat. I think that term has been overused throughout the decades, and I'm sure there's a lot of PETA people who get mad at me. But hey, anyway, let's talk about ring sizing. When we're working with a CAD program to uh, design a ring, what we want to do is come up with the... we want to come up with the right size. So if I have a customer who comes to me and wants a custom ring made and let's say uh, she's a size 7, I have to know the proper uh, size to make that ring and that comes in several forms. But when we're working in CAD there's an easier way to do it obviously than uh, you know just bending metal and working with a ring stick. So what you first need to do is know your ring sizes. So let's stick with the size 7 idea. What we'll have here um, and, and there's two ways to look at this. We can we can go to Google, and I'm going to pull up a Google page here, and I'm just going to do a search for ring size chart. And if you want the chart, you can just kind of look at any of these images here, and I'll just pull up the image. I think in most supply books you'll find that conversion, but if you don't have a supply book, just look for any one of them that has the conversion over two millimeters. And I'm just going to do, let's look at this one here. Oh, here we go. Um, if we open this up and make it a little bit bigger, we have a ring size chart, United States, Canada, Mexico. This goes to size 12. And if I want to do a size 7, which is right here, I would follow that over to the millimeter size, which is 17.32, give or take a little bit, depending on what you're working with. The circumference of that equates to about 56 millimeters. So keep that. That's the inner circumference. It's not the outside circumference because the size of the ring is going to make a big difference. And then it also gives it to us in inches. But since we're working with millimeters, let's just stick with this for now. A size 7 would be 17.3 millimeters. So with that in mind, I'm going to close up my tab here. And we'll go back to uh, this design here that I have here. And now the easiest way to do this for me, because I've got a design that I've pulled in here. And uh, let's just start fresh. I'm going to delete all this. X. I'm going to come over to my library and pull up. Um, let's just pull up mountings wherever they are. I'm going to grab just a generic mounting. Let's see. Something about like this and we'll append it. Okay, I'm going to size that up and let's look at the item here. So we've got the outer circumference, we've got the X and Y coordinates, but I need to know that this is going to be 17.3 millimeters on the inside. How I typically do this is very simple. I'm going to do Shift A, I'm going to add a mesh and a cylinder. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make this 17.32, 17.32, and I'm going to make this 20 millimeters high. I'm going to rotate that along the x-axis, R, X, 90. I'm going to look at this from the front view here, and now I know this circle here, this cylinder I added, is a size 7 or 17.3 millimeters. Then I'll grab my ring, and I will just size it down to about like that. I will then get rid of the cylinder that I created. And now when I look at this on my screen, I have the outside dimensions here, but the inside dimensions are approximately 17.3 millimeters. And then we can count that over by looking at our center point. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is 16. And then 18 millimeters would be over here. So we know that's just kind of pushing into 17.3 millimeters total. That's one way to do it. Now let's go to the next way. <clears throat> I am going to try to use the 
uh, jewel tool to see if I can get something here. So I'm going to come over and I hit the ring size. I'm going to come over here to ring size, make sure I got a check there, and I'm going to make sure that's on 7. Tells me it's approximately 17 millimeters, and I'll add that. And you can see it puts the curve right there on my screen. So the great thing is now I can kind of work with this curve and make a ring around this. But there is an issue with it. Um, right now, this tool is not working correctly with the current and latest version of Blender. So let me show you what I mean. If I wanted to add in some dimensions to this curve, I would come over to the curve properties here on my tab. I would come down to geometry and I'm going to give this, uh, let's see, extrude. We'll make this approximately, let's just put in here, let's make this ring 2.5 millimeters wide. If you hear any scratching, that's my puppy. He seems to be uh, looking for a comfortable place to sit. Okay, so now I've got this rim. If I look at it from the side, you can tell it's a rim, and that's 17 millimeters in diameter, and I can double check that by coming over to the item property, and you can see 17.3, so there we go. He's got that correct. But now how do I give this some depth? Well, I'd come over to the bevel edge, and I would normally give this a little bit of depth, but it doesn't doesn't seem to be working the way I want this. If I want this ring to be about one and a half millimeters, 1.5 millimeters thick, and then I look at it from the side view, if I go into tab edit mode, you can see the problem I have is that the circle is actually in the middle, and that is the right ring size. My new beveled edge, I'll come over here, and I'm just going to go back into object mode. Oh, it's not looking good. So you can see I've got probably 0.7 millimeters from the center of this dot to here. So how do I adjust for that? Well, we would do it normally with the offset. And the problem here is in Blender, my offset can only go to one millimeter, which you can see now causes a slight problem because this dot here to this dot here is 17.3 millimeters. But now the inner circumference of this band is only going to be let's say 16, 16.2 oh, millimeters, this gives us a problem and we can't work with that. So the, the way around that is to make your object here and then I will go back into object mode, right click on it and convert it to a mesh. Now you can see we've got a really detailed mesh here. It's not perfect but it gives me kind of what I want and I can do a cutout like I've showed you before, which would be to add in a cylinder. Shift A, we'll add in a cylinder. And my cylinder is going to be, we'll just make that a little more detailed. We're going to make this 17.3, 17.3, 20 millimeters, RX90. So I'm going to rotate it along the X axis. And let's go back into solid mode. Now, what I could do is grab that. With that selected, hold the shift key down, select my new band, and then remove that. Take the difference. And now when I look at this, I have a ring that is 17.3 millimeters on the inside circumference. That does mess up our geometry slightly, but it's not going to be relevant to what we're working with here. So just to go and give you an idea, that's another way to do it. Yet. A third way to get a proper ring size. Let's delete this and now I'll go over to um, I, I can use the jewel craft to get my perfect ring size here so I'll select ring size or size curve and we want a size 7 I'm going to add that and it gives us exactly what we want here. Now I'm going to extrude this like I did in, in the other present process. We'll just extrude this over to, let's say we'll make that 2.5 millimeters. So now it's approximately 2.5 millimeters wide. And I will convert this to a mesh. So when I tab in here, you can see I've got um, a mesh now. You can zoom in and it's very fine and detailed. With everything selected, I'm going to hit extrude. S and then I will size this out a little bit 
maybe like so. Go back into object mode. And if I shade this flat, you can see now we've got a band that has a perfect inner diameter of 17.3 millimeters and an outside diameter of almost 20 millimeters. And to double check that, we just come back to the item tab and here you can see the outer dimensions. Sadly, Blender does not give you the inner dimensions. You can, however, turn on the measure tool and measure from point to point, it's just like so. And you can see 17.28 millimeters, but then again, I'm probably not on the correct dots. So that's how you do that. Those are considered the easiest way to get a ring size. Now, if you're doing a custom design, for instance, I'm just going to go back to new. I get rid of this. And if I make a, I'll use my school ring example. If I was going to start by making a school ring, I might uh, size this down to about here. And uh, let's see, we're going to make it a little narrower on the y-axis, sy, we'll make that a little narrower. I'm going to make this a little oblong on the z-axis, sz, we're going to bring it up just a little bit. And now I can do a cutout of my ring size by adding in a cylinder. And then I will do the same here, 17.3, 17.3, 20, and then rx90. And then I'm going to lengthen this on the y-axis, sy, make that a little longer. When I go to the front view, I can kind of put this wherever I want this. I can make this as big as I want. So let's say that's where I want my cutout. Let's bring that down just a little bit. Let's say this is where I want my cutout. I can select my cylinder and then select my ring frame and then just do the Boolean tool. Oh, let's see, Boolean difference. And now I have a ring that is approximately 17.3 millimeters from side to side, or approximately a size 7. And then I can model with the rest of the shape as I wish. So that's how I get to the perfect ring size that I'm working with. So keep that in mind. Now, I could probably make this ring um, so that it's a size 7, and I could size it down to a 5 or maybe up to a 9 without making major modifications to the entire ring. But as you get into bigger sizes, you're going to have to be conscious of, I can't take a ring that was designed as a size 6 and make it a size 12. It, it, the geometry of the ring just doesn't work by simply sizing the band up to meet those because this will change the entire geometry of the surface in regards to a setting stones or certain things that uh, you'll have to keep in mind. I hope that helps you guys get to the right ring size. If it did, perfect. If it didn't, leave a comment in the, uh, in the comment section below and I will try to answer questions as best I can. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I didn't ramble on too much. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, considering subscribing now. And if you want to get notified every time I upload a video, I uh, suggest hitting that little no bell notification button. And every time I upload a new video, whatever it is, you'll get a notification. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Stay safe.